Hello, everyone, and welcome to LabX's Before You Buy webinar series. My name is Mary Beth Didana, and I'll be moderating today's discussion, extensive introduction to the products and CRO services of Sino Biological. We like our webinars to be very interactive, so we encourage you to submit your questions to us at any point during today's webinar. Our speaker will address these questions during the question and answer session following her presentation. To ask a question or make a comment, simply type your query into the Q&A box, which is located on the right-hand side of your screen. We'll try to address as many questions as possible during our time together. If we happen to run out of time, I will forward any unanswered questions to today's speaker and she can respond to you directly if possible. Additional resources for today's presentation are also located on the right-hand side of your screen. I would like to remind you that this webinar recording will be available on demand shortly following this presentation. So please watch your emails for information from LabX on how to access this free video. I would especially like to thank Sino Biological for sponsoring this event. This support allows LabX to keep these webinars free of charge for our readers. Dr. Lin-Lin Zhang is a technical specialist at Sino Biological Europe. She provides technical assistance to the recombinant protein and antibody products and CRO service support in the field of recombinant protein production and antibody development for the clients. Dr. Zhang works as a project leader in the University of Lubeck before she joined Sino Biological Europe. Her research interests fall into the fields of protein structural biology, antiviral therapy, and virus host interaction mechanisms. Dr. Zhang determined the crystal structure of the unligandin main protease of SARS-CoV-2, as well as its complex with an alpha ketoamide peptidomimetic compound named 13B. Dr. Zhang, thanks for joining us today. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Lin-Lin Zhang. I'm currently working as a technical specialist in Sino Biological Europe. I would like to take this opportunity to thank LabX for organizing this amazing event. And today I will give you an extensive introduction of our catalog products and the CRO services. I hope you will enjoy it and find something interesting for you. At the first part, I would like to give you a quick overview of our company. And Sino Biological was founded in 2007 and our headquarters is in Beijing, China, and where all the manufacturing facilities are located. And Sino Biological has established two subsidiaries in the United States and Europe respectively. As the only official dot company in Europe, we sit in Frankfurt with our local sales and service team as well as our protein inventory. Our company is actually growing pretty fast. In last year, we were rewarded an IPO with a collection of 700 million US dollar capital for continuous development of the company. And we have more than 400 employees, 30% of us hold advanced degrees. We have large lab and office space in Beijing, China. Uh, our core business includes catalog products and the customized services. Uh, in terms of catalog products, uh, we can provide uh, recombinant proteins, antibodies, genes, and uh, cell culture supporting reagents. Uh, the customized services are going to be our main topic today, which I will talk in detail later. In the next few slides, I will share with you some of, uh, some of our featured catalog products. With the largest validated recombinant protein bank, uh, we have more than 6,000 recombinant proteins, uh, 3,800 of which are expressed by the human cells. Mm, the products cover really a broad range, including reagents for most hot and popular research fields, uh, for instance, proteins for viral-related research, uh, immunotherapy, oncology, stem cell epigenetic, and neurobiology, and many other fields. Uh, I will elaborate some featured product groups in detail, uh, labeled in green color here. We have a comprehensive virus research reagent bank that contains a lot of reagents from more than 50 currently known viruses, uh, such as a full collection of influenza virus vaccine strains from 2015 all the way to 2021. Uh, we have now over 180 RBD or spike protein mutants in this collection. Mm, our, recombinant uh, our recombinant viral proteins can be generated at a very fast fashion. 
uh, the influenza proteins were produced in about 12 days. It only took us about six days to generate the SARS-CoV-2 IBD of the Omicron variant. Reagents for immunotherapy is one of our important product series. We have a very comprehensive offering covers most of the major immune check pathways and families. Uh, that is the B7 family, TNF family, certainly the PD-1, PD-L1 pathway. It really covers about 80 key immune checkpoints and nearly 500 proteins corresponding to these targets. About 700 antibodies binding to these targets. Sinobiological also offers about 1,100 cytokine-related products and more than 240 cytokine molecules, including like growth factors, cytokines, chemokines, interferons, interleukins. So these products are featured with high purity, high batch-to-batch -batch consistency, and most of the products are animal-free. Uh, CAR T-cell therapy has been widely used in the field of cancer immunotherapy and clinical application, and Sinobiological has developed co comprehensive molecules for both of solid tumor and um, hematologic malignancies targets. Uh, we also can provide uh, all the biotin-related biotin proteins for the listed targets. The conjugated or unconjugated proteins uh, have almost the same binding affinity to their antibodies. And in addition, a lot of biomarker proteins are also listed in the catalog products, in particular for the cancer and angiogenesis marker proteins from different species. Uh, meanwhile, we also developed a lot of antibodies targeting these biomarkers of many different cancer types um, for different utilizing purposes including Western blood, ELISA, effects immunofluorescence, immunohistochemistry. Sinobiological is also the largest supplier for bioactively validated FC receptors from different species, uh, like from human, mouse, uh, rat, a rabbit, and rhesus, and they are recombinantly produced using different extraction systems. It includes, it includes variants for different antibody for mitobinding, binding, for example, the FC alpha receptor for IgA binding, FC gamma receptor for IgG binding. Uh, the bioactivity are also validated by either the ELISA assay or, the, or other QC methods such as SPR or BLI. Enzyme is a type of proteins which are responsible for thousands of metabolic processes in living cells. They are important tools or targets for research and drug development. Our enzyme offering covers most of the enzyme categories from different species. The enzymatic activities are validated in the functional ELISA assay or substrate-based assay. Another big category of our products are the antibodies. According to different application roles, we can provide primary antibodies, secondary antibodies, tagged antibodies, and many other types of antibodies. In next slide, I will elaborate the style of our antibody products, rapid monoclonal antibodies. Compared with classical mouse monoclonal antibodies, Rabid monoclonal antibodies typically have higher affinities and specificities for the antigens they recognize. Uh, through the successful development of the phage display and the single B-cell platforms, Sinobiological is able to provide high-quality rabbit monoclonal antibodies um, with quite higher sensitivity and specificity to satisfy different research needs. Uh, they are more suitable for de detection of mouse antigens without interference from IgG cross-reactivity. In addition to the rabbit monoclonal antibodies, a comprehensive collection of mouse monoclonal antibodies and rabbit polyclonal antibodies against the different antigens from different species are also available in our protein inventory. Now let us move on to the main subject of the day, the CRO services. 
This slide briefly introduces what we can do for our clients at this point. Um, basically, we utilize our recombinant pro uh, production platform. We offer recombinant protein uh, and antibody production services. Uh, with our antibody development platforms, we also offer antibody discovery services as well. So in today's presentation, along with the general introductions, I will also include a few cases and showcasing the work that we did in the CRO service area to give you a more comprehensive understanding of our capabilities. This slide is basically focusing on the workflow, how we do our business. And when we receive an inquiry from our clients, we can offer them a standard service package for some simple cases. And for instance, the recombinant antibody expression is considered a not very complicated case and we can provide them a standard service package, uh, which will be followed by a standard code. Mm, we also have some non-standard service package, which means if the project is more complicated, then we will make an assessment of the project with our solid internal infrastructure to clarify the specifics of the deliverables. Uh, if the clients and our side are both happy with the proposals of the project, and once the payment is issued in a format of purchase order or some other type of payment information is confirmed, then we can move forward to carry out the project. And later, some update will be provided by the project manager. Of course, once the project is finished, there will be shipment process along with the invoice, certificate of analysis. Definitely, we will provide a complete project report. Now let's, uh, let us move on to the first part of the CRO services, which is the recombinant expression. Comparing to nature source uh, proteins, um, recombinant proteins have significant advantages, including unlimited resources, animal-free, high yield, and many other features. Uh, in order to generate a recombinant protein, we have to take the type of the gene and clone it into an expression vector and the transfect the vector to uh, virus host cells. Uh, then vector will hijack the cellular machinery of the host cells to, gener uh, to generate the target protein. Uh, once the target protein is expressed, we can purify the proteins using different chromatography approaches. Uh, in China, we have four major platforms for recombinant expression, including the mammalian cell expression systems, uh, such as HEC293 or true cell lines. Uh, we also have the insect cells and E. coli expression systems. Uh, in very occasional case, uh, we also use the yeast expression system. And once we receive an inquiry, we will perform a sequence analysis of the protein, uh, try to identify these parameters of interest, uh, such as the molecular weight, PI, the transmembrane domain, post-translational modifications, cysteine-contained profile, instability, and uh, other parameters, uh, which will dictate the, the construct as well as the downstream processes associated with the expression and the purification of the protein. And also what kind of quality control methods and standards we are going to pursue. And after that, we are going to run a pilot to assess the feasibility to see the protein is feasible. If everything works well, we can scale up the expression all the way to deliver the final product to the clients. For the affinity tags, they are important for either protein purification as well as sometimes for enhancing solubilities. And here is the most of the common protein furin tags that we use at Sino. And all the tags have different size and features. They are suitable for different systems. Um, for instance, the histidine tag is more universal uh, with low immunogenicity. It can enhance the protein solubility at some degree. It is also suitable for denatured purification as well. So in Sino, we mainly use the histidine tag uh, or FC tag as purification tags. Um, but other protein tags are also available to facilitate the solubility or purification. Now I want to share with you some cases during our work. 
Uh, a successful recombinant protein can be made using different approaches combined essentially. Uh, in this case, it actually shows the generation of a tech-free dimeric protein using the HEC293 expression system. The first purification step, we used the I exchange column, and then we collected the fractions containing the target protein, uh, followed by uh, using two steps of gel filtration columns, uh, which resulted in the protein with 99% dimer formation. And also, the protein is active according to the proliferation activity assay. And I think this case indicates that. An affinity tag is not necessarily required to get high purity proteins in some cases. The second case I would like to show how important the correct construct is going to impact the protein expression. And this one is the extracellular domain of a single pass membrane that we made in insect cells. Uh, in the first construct, um, we tried to secrete this protein into the cell culture supernatant, but unfortunately, no secretion was observed for the first construct. Then we went back and performed the sequence hydrophobicity analysis and identified that there is a high, highly hydrophobic region at the end terminals of the protein, uh, which could be the causing factor for non-expression, aggregation or degradation by the host cells. So after discussion with our client, uh, we agreed that this section is not relevant for their desired functionality. So we went ahead and removed this section and we obtained a very good uh, monomeric uh, after just one step of um, liquid affinity purification. Um, so the constructs are very important and the certain regions of the protein might need to be removed in order for good expression. This case I would like to share with you is that we produced the full length of the extracellular domain of the spike protein in the prefuring trimeric format of several mutants using the HEC293 cells. Uh, here I only show an example of the ECD of the spike protein from the Omicron variant. So the protein purity is examined by both SDS page and the HPLC as well. So it has a correct molecular weight of about 480 to 550 kilodaltons determined by mass spectrometry. It is active in terms of the ACE2 binding activity examined by both ELISA and BLI. Uh, meanwhile, we also tested the stability of this protein from the aspects of uh, protein concentration, biological activity, purity, and molecular weight. Here you can see after three rounds of free cell trials, the protein can still keep comparable testing parameters as the, fresh, uh, as the freshly prepared sample. Next part is the recombinant antibody expression. Antibodies have different shapes and formats. Uh, we have experience expressing all, uh, all of these four subtypes of IgG as well as IgM. And we have very limited experience in producing IgA. And also antibodies can be fragmented into FABs or SCFV and also an, uh, another class of unique antibody called nanobodies. There can be antibody furin proteins, which we can take different fragments fused with FC domain from different subclasses um, to form antibody furin proteins to extend their half-life. Uh, there are also chimeric antibodies and also bispecific antibodies. Uh, anyway, there are a lot of options in terms of the format of recombinant antibodies. Unfortunately, we do have quite good some experience in most of these formats. For the expression host, we usually use HEC293 or true cell lines. Um, for normal IgG expression, we clone the light chain and heavy chain into two vectors and co-transfect them together into the host cells. And the host cells will help us produce the antibodies. And for the tags, we can use histidine tag or FC tag 
for affinity purification. Uh, here also shown some cases of antibody furin proteins. So we can express VHH antibody fused with histidine tag, um, fused with FC tag, um, and also applied to the SCFV as well. We can also produce the fiber in a histidine tag fused format. Uh, we do also have some experience in producing bispecific antibodies using different formats. We do prefer the client provide us with the sequence of the antibodies for those ones with bispecific antibodies. One of the featured services that we provide is to use a food eight double knockout HEC-293 or true cell lines to produce a fixated antibodies, which means the fixated residues on the antibody glycogen will be removed using these cell lines. And these fixated antibodies are very good for the ADCC activity enhancement. So if the ADCC performance is something the clients are interested in, so these cell lines are very good tools to generate ADCC enhanced antibodies. Another feature service for recombinant protein, uh, recombinant antibody expression is to produce IgM antibodies using HEC-293 uh, system at this point. As you know, they are huge. They can be patamer or hexamer depending on whether they have g chain or not. So we have two methods to, to produce pentameric IgMs, uh, which requires their g chain. And both methods will be able to yield the antibody at the correct molecular weight and high purity uh, analyzed by SDS page. And the expression of hexameric IgM is quite similar to the expression of IgG as well. So this is relatively easier compared to the expression of pentameric IgM. I think a lead time is the point that our customer might be interested in. Uh, normally, we start from a gene synthesis to quality control to deliver the final product to our clients. This is basically the timeline for the expression of the protein in different systems. And recombinant production using E. coli, e -coli usually takes about six to eight weeks. Insect cell expression system uh, usually takes a little bit longer, about 10 weeks because it has to undergo a virus package process. Um, for antibody or protein expression in mammalian cells, it also takes about six to eight weeks to complete. Uh, we also have a high throughput protein and antibody expression platform. Uh, we have a high throughput primer design and a synthesis platform. We can generate a primer library and subsequently generate the vector library to express proteins or antibodies. Actually, this platform was initially established for the high throughput antibody expression. Then we expanded the capacity to the high throughput protein expression. Um, for instance, we have a lot of mutants in the IBD domain of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. And we can generate a lot of mutants using this platform. Uh, basically, the difference of the platform bet between our company and other companies is that uh, we use a shaker flask to perform the high throughput expression. Uh, the volumes can be ranged from 20 to 400 milliliter. Uh, we can produce about um, 100 to 200 proteins or antibodies every week. Um, we have a very good antibody successful rate and the faster turnaround time. Uh, if there is a very well established library, we might be able to provide the final product in about two to four weeks. Uh, we do have used this plat platform to produce several viral proteins as well. Again, the lead time high throughput is a little bit different for high throughput antibody expression at this point uh, with the preferred format including human IgG, human IgG4, mouse IgG2A, mouse IgG2B combined a standard quality control including um, to measure the protein concentration, uh, using SDS page to measure the protein purity. The lead time usually takes about three weeks. 
Uh, we can also add some optional analysis listed here, but they will complicate the project a little bit more. It will have some impact on the lead time as well. Uh, please note this lead time is the reference for the antibody production. And for the recommended protein expression, we would have to do a small scale trial to prove the concept if a protein or a few proteins can be expressed using this proposal. And once we establish the feasibility, we can incorporate the expression of proteins into this platform as well. So at that time, this timeline is also referable as well. The third part of our service is antibody development. We have a very comprehensive animal immunization platform, antibody generation and a screening platform, as well as these assay platforms to identify the most suitable leads for us. So our experience range not only from classical mouse monoclonal antibody development using hybridoma, but also we have established the phage display and a monoclonal antibody development platform, as well as the single B-cell based antibody development platform. We also have experience developing antibodies against a specific post-translational modifications, um, for instance, phosphorylation, and we also have experience in generation uh, anti, uh, anti idiotic antibodies for different purposes, for instance, ADA assessment. With our comprehensive antibody development platforms, uh, we can do hybridoma, phage display, as well as B-cell sortings. Uh, we can start from uh, immunogene preparation all the way to antibody production. Uh, the immunogens can be a protein or peptide, or we can also do DNA or whole cell immunization as well. We also have different, different analysis tools to pick up the candidates with the best performance. Uh, we are also experienced in generating anti idiotype antibody as well as some post-translational modification specific antibodies, especially the phosphorylation specific antibodies as well. So of course we can do polyclonal antibody generation as well. So this is relatively straightforward immunizing the animal. Uh, and once the, the title reaches the desired value, we will sacrifice the animal and purify the polyclonal antibodies. So the antibodies generated by these platforms have different application roles. They can be used for Western blot, ELISA, uh, immunofluorescence, and we have a very experienced team to generate immunohistochemistry applicable uh, antibodies as well. Generally, it will take a little bit longer to generate antibodies. The immunogen preparation will cost some time, and the animals will cost some time to mount a sufficient immune response, after which they can be sacrificed to proceed into the antibody selection process. And generally, it takes about six, uh, four to six months to complete a mouse or rabbit monoclonal antibody generation service. But we do have a speedy immunization regime, uh, which combines our unique immunization strategy as well as advanced, uh, so that we can expedite this process and finish a project in about three to four months' time. And we do understand that the time is sensitive in any research and development efforts, so we also try our best to work as quickly as possible. Here is a case that we performed for a client to develop an antibody using a single B-cell sorting technique. After sorting of the B-cell, we have identified 380 antigen-specific B-cells, and we then generated about 142 sequence pairs, which yields about 46 clones, and among which it are better than the control antibodies that are commercially available. I think after immunization all the way to the antibody characterization, it took, up, uh, took us about 26 days. So the B-cell sorting platform certainly an expedited method to generate customized antibodies. Thank you very much for your time. You are more than welcome to visit our website and contact us. Thank you.
Okay, great. Thanks very much, Dr. Zhang, for that great presentation. At this point, we're going to move on to the question and answer portion of this webinar. And here is the first question. You have an extensive collection of recombinant virus protein. How do you choose the most suitable expression hosts for these proteins? Yes, I think viral proteins are quite unique. From the point of view of the revolution, viruses are not close to either prokaryotic or eukaryotic species. So these proteins sometimes are quite complicated. Uh, for instance, the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, it is trimeric format with heavy glycosylation. So we do see similar complex proteins from other viruses, uh, for instance, from HIV or influenza virus. And for these proteins, due to their complexity and high order of structure, we would like to use the uh, eukaryotic system for the recombinant production and to ensure the correct folding of the structure and the post-translational modifications. For the other viral proteins, for instance, some enzymes of the virus, we found that the prokaryotic expression system, uh, such as E. coli, uh, should be able to produce these proteins in adequate amount and sufficient activities. So when we work with the SARS-CoV-2 nuclear capsid protein, uh, we did try to produce the protein using the insect cells. Uh, we can produce them, uh, but uh, we encountered some aggregation problem. Then we switched uh, to the equi expression system, and the problem was resolved. Uh, unfortunately, there is no uh, one-side fit-all approach. So for some general guidelines, especially for the surface glycoproteins, as uh, your karyotic expressions should be uh, considered first for the proteins involved in the intracellular enzymatic activities, uh, the E. coli expression system should be sufficient. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to the next question. This one says, in what format are the recombinant protein and antibody reagents supplied? Um, basically, they can be supplied in frozen liquid format or as lyophilized powder. Um, for the logistic reason, the lyophilized powder is much easier to transfer. Um, but unfortunately, uh, not all the proteins or antibodies can survive the lyophilization procedure. Basically, it is a dehydration process. And sometimes it will compromise the structure of the protein and cause some aggregation when the protein powder is uh, redissolved really in the bar. As you know, some additives can be used as prote uh, protectant, uh, but well, what we do is that we try to uh, work with a small scale to see if the protein is stable or safe to be processed in a lyophilization manner. If it is stable, then we can go ahead and ship in a lyophilized powder. If it is not, then we can ship the protein in a suitable buffer that retains the stability. Uh, logistically, a uh, life, uh, lifelized powder is the easy way shipping, uh, but we do our best to provide our client the best protein quality. Thank you. All right, wonderful. Thank you. Here's the next question. In terms of recombinant protein production in different expression systems, how do you overcome some difficulties? Example, accumulation of target proteins as inclusion bodies, degradation of recombinant proteins by host proteases and maintain low endotoxin level. Mm, you're really uh, using the most uh, suitable expression host and a fueling of some protein tags, uh, for instance, the GST tag or MBP tag and could increase the stability of the target proteins. Uh, meanwhile, for some proteins with poor solubility additives, such as uh, reducing agents, uh, higher salt concentration and detergents uh, can be added to facilitate protein solubility, uh, given their presence will not uh, impact the desired application of the target proteins. Uh, recombinant proteins usually bear affinity tags for their easy separation from the host cell proteins, and the protease inhibitors are added during the purification process uh, to minimize the impact of um, host cell proteases. Um, low endotoxin levels are maintained by using an endotoxin-free purification pipeline, while excessive level of endotoxin can be removed using methods such as um, spin column absorption absorption or ion exchange chromatography to reduce its level to the acceptable range. Thank you. 
Great. Thank you very much. Here's Currently, the administration routes of antibodies are normal parenteral injection, intravenous, subcutaneous, intramuscular, or intradermal. Even though parenteral application is used, biological drugs can still suffer from pre-systemic degradation by the abundant host enzymes. Are there any alternative non-invasive administration strategies, such as pulmonary delivery, to avoid mechanical stress that further contribute to MAB instability and loss? Um, for full-length antibodies, uh, intravenous injection is the only option, at least of now, uh, due to the complexity of the molecules. Um, however, new format of antibodies, such as single-domain antibodies, uh, also called nanobodies, and other high-affinity binders uh, are more uh, resilient to in their chemical nature and are able to sustain innovative administration strategies. So these molecules can serve as alternatives to uh, conventional full-length antibodies, and they are developed based on the similar approaches. Uh, in addition, I think the Sinobiological offers high-throughput uh, single-domain antibodies uh, expression services. Okay, thank you. We have time for a couple more questions. This one says, what is the advantage of the high-throughput recombinant antibody expression system? Is it restricted for antibody expression only? Basically, the difference of the platform between our company and other companies is that we use the Chic Flask to perform the high throughput expression. The volumes can be ranged from 20 to 400 milliliter. We can produce about 100 to 200 proteins or antibodies every week. We have a very good antibody successful rate and a fast turnaround time. This platform was uh, initially established uh, for the high throughput antibody expression, but later, uh, but later on, we expanded the capacity to the high throughput protein expression. For instance, we have a lot of mutations in the RBD domain of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. Then we can generate a lot of mutants using this platform. Thank you. Great, thank you. We have time for one more question. What is the library size of antibody phage display constructed in Sino Biological? Uh, usually, as long as the library size of 10 to 9 is obtained, then we will move on to the antibody screening step. Uh, if, we if we want to construct a much larger library, uh, such as 10 to 11, then we will perform a lot more rounds of transformation. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks very much. Thank you, Arthur. This brings us to the end of today's webinar. Just a reminder that this webinar will be available on demand shortly following this presentation. On behalf of LabX, I'd like to thank Dr. Lin Lin Zhang for all of the hard work she put into her presentation, and I'd like to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. I'd also like to thank our webinar sponsor, Sinobiological, for their support, which allows LabX to offer these webinars free of charge for our readers. For more information on all of our upcoming or on-demand webinars, or to learn more about the sale and purchasing process for scientific process, electronic testing, and medical equipment, please visit our website at labx.com. We hope you can join us again. Thank you and have a great day.